Hello again, we're back here at Mr. Cho's Workshop. We're underneath this here GM product again. Uh, this time we're going to be going over the Turbo Hydromatic 350, not the 400. Yeah, 400. Oh, God, I have 400. Biggest, strongest transmission ever GM ever made. Not necessarily. The Turbo 350 is well capable of handling 800 horsepower, no problem. You just got to put the right stuff into it. You don't just go out and get, it's like, you can't just put junk in it and you just go, I'm going to go and spend $100 on my rebuild kit and it's like going if you're going to go to like the 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 restaurant and you're going to go get yourself like a, a red robin burger or are you going to spend the the money and get a good quality product or are you going to go down yourself to mcdonald's and get yourself a 99 cent cheeseburger and who knows what's in that so that's what you get you get what you pay for so yes you put cheap stuff in your transmission it ain't gonna work it work and then go bang and then you're it gets expensive real quick all over it again so you spend the money you put the good stuff in first okay if you can't spend a lot of money then you spend what you can but don't always go cheap cheap is bad so we talked about that before you don't go junk we stay away from junk okay so anyway so turbo 350 work just fine as the turbo 400 turbo 400 has got like one extra clutch in the in the, the low reverse and it's got like one extra intermediate so it has one more friction disc in there one more steel plate one more thing to rotate mm -hmm. that's right everyone knows you lose 15 percent through power through your drivetrain but anyway that there's the guy we're talking about tonight that there's the vacuum modulator right here this little gold guy so this is here is referencing off your manifold vacuum so what your manifold vacuum is doing is it's opening up this here modulator valve, allowing your shift valve inside there to control your line pressure. Now, line pressure is how hard your clutches are going to engage. So what we're going to do here, uh, this happens to be an adjustable modulator. So go ahead and take that vacuum line right off there. So if you look in there, you're going to go ahead and get a gander in there, and you're going to see that like you take, put yourself in there like a little flathead screwdriver. Real small one, get in there nice and deep like. Yep. And what you're going to do in there is we're going to go ahead and uh, insert our unit here. And we're going to turn this in just a bit. Inward. That's going to be clockwise. As in the way the clocks rotate. Not counterclockwise, clockwise. So let's take a look, see if we're going to do this here. I'll look at my camera while I do this. So I don't know how good it's going to work out here. Uh, okay, here we go. Gotta find the unit. Oh, there it is. So I've already adjusted it once, so we're gonna go ahead and make a secondary adjustment here. So we're gonna go ahead and turn in and we're gonna watch our rotation of our bit here. And that's gonna be like Galdang half, and there could be one, and yeah, that, that's probably like about one and a half. Okay, so we're gonna call it good right there. So what this is gonna do is this is gonna improve my one to two shift. So when I take off and roll into the throttle, and hopefully don't break the tires too free, and then when I put it into seconds, you're like, just chirp them tires, you know, put in nice firm engagement, just bam, slam them babies right in there. You don't want a soft engagement or like a slide into your transmission because what happens over time is as it ease into it, it's nice and soft. Oh, it's comfortable shift. It's boom, shifts in. Well, guess what happens? It's like slipping a clutch on a manual transmission. And you know what happens when you do that a lot? Yep, you're going to burn that thing up. And you're going to be back into all over again. So you don't necessarily want to have soft shifts in your transmission. Sometimes people don't like that because it hits a little hard. And, and I don't want it to hit hard. I just want, I just want it to shift. Well... This is going to be a performance upgrade. So that's going to be a one to two. That's going to cut down on your ET times because it's going to be a one, two instead of one, two. So that's how it's going to roll. And then two, three is back two, three. So anyway, we're going to go ahead and hook this vacuum line back up on here again. Back up on there. Don't ever forget that. So this is going to go off your direct manifold vacuum. You don't want to have it teed off to a bunch of stuff like off your booster and off like your carburetor port. It's got to go to direct manifold vacuum, and that's how it operates. If it doesn't have good vacuum, it's not going to be good. So it's only as good as it can be. So you got to make it good. 
Anyway, that's their quick uh, rundown of the vacuum modulator adjustment on the GM Turbo 350. Uh, this is a two-wheel drive setup we're working on. Um, but yeah, I'll just uh, keep sending you stuff with, as I go. Thank you.